Hey guys, Tobin Folk Training Northwest. I'm out here at our range in uh, Granite Falls, Washington. And I want to take a minute to talk to the camera uh, about a little bit of testing I've been doing for the last nine months or so, uh, purely based on my own curiosity. The last three, four, five years, these low power variable optics, LPVOs, have been getting really uh, popular on the market. And they caught my eye because as a young ranger in the early 2000s, uh, we were doing a lot of dismounted patrols up in the Hindu Kush uh, in eastern Afghanistan. And back then, our choices were either an ACOG or an Aimpoint Comp M. And you, there, there, was, there was so much uh, variability, or variability, variety. This is variable. Variety is what we saw in the mountains, where you'd be patrolling up a ridgeline, watching down into the valley or across to the opposite ridgeline, but then you might drop into the valley and clear, you know, building to building through a village. So you needed the ability to go from magnified also to one X for this. It was, you know, like a wide discrepancy of possible engagement distances. Um, so anyway, when these things started getting really popular, they caught my eye and I really was excited to get my hands on one of them. Uh, the guys at Vortex Optics were really awesome. They sent me a couple of optics to try out and see, uh, do kind of a back to back testing. I have this, uh, I have that one through six LPVO I just showed you, and they also sent this. This is their, uh, they call this the Crossfire 5X, and it's co-mounted with a Venom 3 MOA Micro RDS, red dot sight. Um, so these, these, two, these two rifles, or I should say these two optics, have really similar capabilities. Um, as I began kind of running around out here in the woods with these and shooting them a bunch, Couple things I, a uh, couple things I want to share with you guys. So my first concern, or sorry, I should back up. The things I like about the LPVO, right? Obviously, you've got the the variable X, uh, one through six. It extends the range of the 5.56 round out to. You can definitely make 600 yard shots with this, which is about where the 5.56 kind of starts to run out of steam. Um, it has an etched reticle, which. While it also has an electronic illuminated reticle, even if your electronics fail, which if you're out here in the woods, you're crossing rivers, you're sleeping in the mud, at some point, some of your electronics are gonna have some trouble. I don't care how many O-rings, how well greased the threads are. Uh, you don't wanna trust electronics when you're out in the bush. Um, so you have your full range of variability, one through six, always is gonna work in daylight hours because the reticle's etched in there. Something else I really liked about this, this is their low end Strike Eagle model, um, which quite frankly, they also sent a Viper, which is significantly more expensive. And I honest, and I ended up liking this one. It's a little bit lighter weight and it has a ranging tool in the reticle, which is really kiss simple to use. And the Viper has, it has your mil dot MOA hash marks in there, which I know all you uh, armchair commandos are gonna say, dude, you can use that for ranging. Yes, you can. I like the simple tool that even the smartest Marine can look through, set it at somebody's belt and get a distance almost immediately. It's really easy to use. Uh, don't want to go too much more into that. Oh boy. Drawbacks of the one through six. There's one big one that I found, which is that if you are dialed up into a higher magnification, four five, six, and you're on your scope, you're shooting. And then at some point you decide to move forward close with your target, right? Find, fix, finish. You found and fixed at distance. Now it's time to move forward and finish. If you forget to crank this thing back down to one X, there is a possibility that you may find yourself in a close contact with your scope jammed up at four, five, six X. And that's gonna make it a lot more difficult for you to acquire a sight picture and get that first round off quickly. Um, I guess it'd be an engineering feat, I don't know anything about the insides of this thing. It would be awesome if there was some sort of spring-loaded return where we're, wherever you are, you know, you're, you're loading the spring as you go from one, two, three, four, five, six, and wherever you are on that dial, you can slap a lever to release and it snaps itself back to one X. I don't know if that's possible, that's just me dreaming. Talk about the Crossfire, sorry, Spitfire 5X. Second time I've done that, right? Um, I didn't expect to like this. Prism sights require a, or I should back up and say, this is a prism sight. It has a fixed magnification at 5X. It has an etched reticle with an illuminated reticle. 
Um, again, if your electronics fail after you cross a river, at the very least, in daylight hours, you can still use your etched reticle. Uh, one of the weaknesses here is that if your micro red dot sight fails, you no longer have a 1x capability. Um, for that reason, I kind of expected not to like this optic, and this ended up being the one I favor. Um, I like KISS simple stuff. I don't like having to dial that 1x, 4x, 1x, 6x, 1x. I like that with this guy, sorry, I'm do it so you guys can see through the camera. I don't really have to move my head. The height over bore of the RDS on top of this uh, crossfire is exactly where I need it for my eye. And then if I want to go to my 5x, all I really have to do is duck my head down a little bit. 1x, 5x, 1x, 5x. Very simple to go back and forth. No chance you're accidentally going to get caught with this thing uh, or with your uh, with your magnifi mag magna magnification 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 caught at a higher level when you just need the red dot. Um, again, I don't know if you can trust this in adverse weather. I'm definitely going to make sure uh, this venom gets a little wet and muddy this winter. We'll see how that goes. Um, but I, I really ended up liking this uh, uh, prism micro red dot setup. It's really lightweight, really kiss simple, set it and forget it. Ranger likes kiss simple, right? <coughs> All that said, if right now today the uh, communists invaded and Patrick Swayze, Charlie Sheen and I were going to haul ass out into the mountains, yell wolverines and be badasses, I think that the optic I'm reaching for is the one through six and only because of the etched reticle and the ability to have your one X magnification without a battery. Uh, again, if I had more time with the venom, I might be more willing to trust it through adverse weather and just shitty conditions that an infantryman's going to get himself into. But for now, until that, uh, until that level of trust is established, I'm going with the, uh, with the one through six. Um, all right, I hope that was informational and that you guys got something out of that. Biggest point to remember, guys, whatever setup you're using, I don't care if it's just an old M16A2 with a carry handle and iron sights, if you're not getting out and training with it, it's not going to make a fucking difference. $10,000 worth of Gucci gear in your safe that you don't know how to use, it's going to be $10,000 worth of my gear. All right, guys, catch you later.